I'm just starting to wonder now about this mad rush to make sure that every game is played, whether it might even be worth reconsidering that now. And listen, I don't live in the UK. I don't want to go too far. It's really hard to make an assessment from, you know, from afar. But maybe it is time just to think about desperately rushing around and trying to get all these matches played in something, whether that is actually the right thing to do right now, you know. And I wonder if maybe at some point, or rather, let me say this, because I, I don't want to go too far and I don't want to say I'm suggesting this, but I just wonder if it might happen within the next few weeks, given the current situation in, in the UK and in England especially, actually, whether it might be time to say, is it worth having a little break from the Premier League? Is it, is it you know, you sort of looked last year when football came back, whenever it was in May or June or whenever, you know, you sort of had that feeling that, that, that you know, the football needed to come back. It, it was a message of hope. You know, everyone needed to see some football come back. Well, you don't need a message of hope right now, do you? I mean, you guys, uh, you know, Joe, Joe, you're in England. Finno, you're in Scotland. I don't know. It seems to be that's not the message that people need. The message people need at the moment is discipline, right, in this situation. Let's, let's get through it by following the rules. And I just wonder if this mad dash around the country of people running around all over the place, desperately trying to fit in fixtures, desperately trying to make sure that, that we can play these games. Like I say, I'm not urging us to stop it, but I just wonder if that decision might come up now. It might seem unlikely now, but in a couple of weeks' time, the situation, as it appears to be, just keeps getting worse and worse, whether we might be reaching that stage where, hang on a minute, maybe it makes sense just to have a pause. And if it means you don't get to play all 38 games or whatever it is at the end of the season, maybe again, we need to be started thinking of creatively about how you have a decisive season using some kind of playoff thing or some kind of buzzle, bu uh, bubble thing like the NBA did last year, or even in the Champions League where you're having some kind of playoff rounds at the end. As I say, no, at this stage, I'm not suggesting that. I wouldn't, feel, I wouldn't feel able to make that suggestion not living in the UK. I just wonder if something that drastic might be coming in the next few weeks and this we're sort of seeing the first signs of it. I think you're, you're spot on, Kevin, with the idea of potentially introducing a bubble. In my opinion, I think it was madness that they didn't try and introduce something similar to that. I understand that it's a long season, etc. Um, I think it's also madness that we even entertained the idea of the magic of the FA Cup this weekend when we've got, you know, plumbers and electricians and people that work in supermarkets going up against professional footballers who are clearly, you know, dealing with two very different types of daily kind of life at the moment. For me, it will be interesting to see whether in a couple of weeks' time, whether or not we start to see more elite-level players coming down with COVID as a result of these mixed-league games in the FA Cup. In terms of stopping the league, and I, I don't want to speak for England, but I know that in Scotland, it's definitely something... We don't have anything else at the moment. You know, we literally don't have anything else to do aside from watch sport. You know, I can go for my one walk a day. I can go to the supermarket... But aside from that, I can't do anything. So really, I think for a lot of people, elite sport is the the escape that they're allowed that feels somewhat normal. Um, and it would be a shame if that was taken away, not least because we're probably in the grips of one of the most exciting Premier League seasons that we've had in years, I would say. Uh, good point there, lads, both of you. Um, the bubble, maybe, maybe the time to do it will be when always around mid-february we have an international break and i think that's a recipe for disaster those meaningless nation league games nations league games um when players are traveling and flying all over the place that's the time i think to take a break cancel them and see if that makes a difference but maybe maybe they should take a two-week break or a week break or something just just to calm things down if things keep going the way they are i mean in the uk obviously they are pretty bad i think scotland the whole second division or the, the lower leagues in scotland are, are gone Finno, yeah yeah so everything below the championship has been uh there's a fire break for three weeks um which i i don't disagree with and i empathize and sympathize with fans of those teams that don't get to see their teams for for three weeks I think the issue starts to come as who's going to pay for all of this if it does get cancelled or if it does go down the null and void route. We had the issue with Scotland last season where they had to make a finite, uh, final decision on the league because of the sponsors and so that they could attribute prize money, etc. And we're talking about Scotland. If we talk about the Premier League, we're talking about sums that are 10 times that amount. And, you know, if you are... If you're Fulham at the moment... And all of a sudden tomorrow they go, right, well, the league's done and you go down. The, um, the first thing that you do is go to court 
because you've got two games in hand, you're ticking upwards, and against Brighton, you're fancying your chances. Brighton are going happy days, and it's a really murky situation, I think. Yes, yeah, I suppose that's what I mean, though, is that maybe, maybe at some point it's going to be time to get creative about how you finish off a league. If, if there is some kind of enforced break, you know, and maybe there is a way, like we joked last week, you know, or I did, sorry, you know, you, I couldn't pick a favourite from the top nine. And I wonder if, you know, maybe there's going to be something in that where you end up playing the top 10 or play off, you know, in, in God knows where they play, you know, one of these, you know, where the training, training complexes where the England team plays or at universities or something like that, just to sort of whittle it down to something manageable. I don't think, you know, maybe we're not there. You, you know, people listening to this, you guys probably know far better than me what the actual situation is. But I just wonder if something like that happens, you know, is there a way of rescuing, having a fantastic end to the season? Like people were pretty sceptical about the end of the Champions League last year. But in the end, I think even UEFA came out and said, that, you know, that's something we might look into in the future because it was great. You know, and we all, if you're a fan of basketball, the NBA was just fantastic last year the way it finished you know so dreadful circumstances but but making the best of it and like i say i'm not, I'm not trying to suggest that this should happen i just mean you know it, it, if it does because people start talking like that then then yeah getting creative about how you finish off the league but albeit not in the best way might might be an interesting approach thank you for listening if you'd like to hear more of our podcasts please click on the red subscribe button on the bottom right hand side thank you